So who is this person you're referring to? It surely would be someone undercover, right? Don't worry. Just wait. Later. Oh, good lord. Why, hello, Inferno. And stranger. What's up, merchant? Please tell me this is just a joke, just a disguise, right? Let me reveal it. I wouldn't do that, Blondie. And plus, I'm not wearing anything else under this. And another thing, I'm quite too embarrassed to get naked on camera yet. Saving that for later. <laughs> you know what? Fair point. I do not need to see that. Merch, we need info on Morbius. You got any? I, uh... <laughs> um... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Buy this copy of me as Roger Cruiser. Put us out of package. <sighs> Fine, I guess I'll take this. I doubt we'll ever need this. Now, info on Morbius. You got any? Well, first, we need to go to my bunker so it can be safe from the Twitter users. Okay, here we are. This place smells like a League of Legends tournament. Now sit right here. Okay, what? How the fuck do you know what that smells like, bro? You don't want to know! Morbius, where is he? Well, first, we need to make a business offer. You give me information on handheld gaming consoles, and I give you information on Morbius. Are you fu- Hey everyone, me here. Handheld game consoles, am I right? They're pretty important to gaming. And they're pretty popular, or at least were. So why don't we just look at all of the handheld consoles that have came out and question these companies' design choices. Now, before we actually get into the beginning of them, we gotta talk about the origins. I'm gonna do this really quickly because I don't care. They're not cool. They started off as things like the Game & Watch. They could play one single tabletop game, and they looked like calculators or a weapon. Now with that out of the way, let's get to the start of the handheld gaming industry of the 80s and 90s. The late 80s to early 90s was definitely a time for handheld gaming. We kicked things off with the Nintendo Game Boy, which released in April 21st of 1989. So the Game Boy, I mean, look at this thing. It looks like a calculator. Now each console, you know, it needs a killer app, right? Tetris, one of the highest selling games ever made and re-released so much. It also had games like Baseball, Alioi, just lame. It also had Super Mario Land. Now this is cool and all, but what if I could actually see it? Yeah, if you sit in the dark or in a very bright area, you aren't seeing sh The Atari Lynx! I hate you. The Turbo Express. Now the Turbo Express, it cost $250. For this, it's a fucking walkie-talkie. The BitCorp Gamate? Gamut? Released in 1990. Required four AA batteries. It closed in 1992. That's probably the most interesting thing about this. The Sega Game Gear. The Game Gear? Released in 1990 in Japan, 91 in North America and Europe. Probably the longest lasting Game Boy rival. Although this looks more like a murder weapon rather than a handheld console. It wasn't bad. The Watara Supervision. I hate it. Kill it. Burn it. The Hardtongue Game Master. An obscure handheld console displaying just 64 by 64 pixels came in black, white, and purple. If only it didn't look like a brick. To kick off the late 90s, we got the Sega Nomad. It is indeed a Sega Nomad, a Sega handheld console. It is indeed something that exists. The Game Boy Pocket, released in 1996. It's the Game Boy, but in a pocket. But actually, no, it's just smaller. Screen was changed to just black and white, unlike what the original Game Boy was. It was an overall improvement on the Game Boy, so no complaints there. Game.com, so it is spelt. It is spelt Game.com, but apparently it is pronounced Gamecom. Why the Game Boy Color released in October 21st of 1998, and it is in fact the Game Boy, but in color. The Neo Geo Pocket Color, released in 1999 in Japan and then later that year in the States and Europe, and I, the only criticism I have is it looks cheap. So the Wonder Swan Color, cost $65 and looks like a monstrosity. Moving on. So we start off the Millennium with the Game Boy Advanced. It's very good. It is probably my favorite handheld console, aside from another one we'll talk about later. The Game Boy Advance games were mwah, chef's kiss. The console itself, mwah, chef's kiss, amazing. The Game Park 32, released in 2001, 
and only 30,000 copies were sold. Oh, thank God. So the Nokia released the N-Gage, and I don't even know what to say. I mean, it looks like a crappy cell phone. In around 2000, the Cybico came out, and there was two versions, the Cybico Classic. That's a calculator! The Cybico Extreme. That's a phone! And apparently you can message friends over radio message. Why? It was early 2000s. Kids still went outside. In 2003, the company Tapwave released the Zodiac. It supported music, photos, internet, and documents. They ended production two years later, and Tapwave filed for bankruptcy. What a W. In 2004, the DS came out. So many innovations. The touchscreen, the wireless connectivity, and of course, my favorite thing, a port for Game Boy Advance game. Very cool. In 2004, the Game King released, and questionable, looks a little familiar, and apparently three of them exist. They all have graphics so primitive, they're debatably worse than the Game Boy, which came out in 1989. Releasing in 2004 in Japan, and, and releasing in 2005 ever Everywhere else. The PlayStation Portable, the first handheld to use optical discs, possibly one of the best so far. I mean, you could play God of War on the go. That's a win. Released in 2005, the Gizmondo. It was designed to play music, movies, and games. I mean, I would hope it could play games. It is a handheld game console, after all. It has a camera to take photos and GPS functions? Bro, I think we were lost and my phone is dead. Don't worry, guys! Let me just whip out my Gizmondo! Uh, email was apparently promised at launch, but never came, as in 2006, the company hit its downfall. The GP2X series has four consoles, the F100 in 2005, the F200 in 2007, the Wiz in 2009, and the Canoe in 2010. They were Linux-based open-source consoles that could run emulators, which was cool, and as far as I know, in South Korea only. Sorry, guys. The Dingo, released in around 2009, I think. I can't really find an exact release date. It was released in China. It supports music, radio, and emulators. Looks like the bottom half of a 3DS. Released in 2009, the PSP Go, a significantly worse version of the original PSP. They discontinued in 2011, thank God. The Pandora, looks like if a DS and a keyboard had a baby. How horrifying. They took pre-orders of 4,000 devices in 2008, and those people would get the console in 2010. Imagine having to wait two years for an item you pre-ordered. Could not be me, man. It is like a mini PC with gaming controls, however it doesn't look very good. The FC16 GO, released in 2009 and has two controllers? They look like red SNES controllers and cables that can let you connect to a TV. Are you tr what are you trying to accomplish? It just looks like a thick DS with controllers, which isn't always a bad thing. The Nintendo 3DS. Ah, the successor to the Nintendo DS. The 3DS. The DS, both 3D. Oh wow, really? And just like the DS, it is very good. Xperia Play, released in 2011 with 50 titles. Pretty good, pretty good. However, it looks like a flip phone. Now we have the PS Vita, which released in 2011 for Japan, 2012 for everyone else. The real sequel to the PSP. It's fine, I guess. It's just a PSP. Nothing new much, except from getting discontinued in 2019. Cool. You all know Razer, right? Yeah, Razer. Company that sells you computer gear, right? Um, just why? Why are they in this video? It was unveiled in January 2011, and yet still hasn't released the Razer Switchblade? It's been 11 years, why isn't this thing already made? Have they forgotten about it? I mean, I would hope so, it just looks like a mini laptop. The NVIDIA Shield is in fact a handheld device that exists. NVIDIA, listen, I get it, it was 2013, you wanna try and capitalize on handheld gaming. You see the 3DS, you see the PS Vita, they were succeeding. But no one is buying this except for the PC nerds. So. This is technically cheating since it is also a home console, but the Nintendo Switch, a monstrosity from Nintendo that actually succeeded. Thank God, Nintendo took a W for once. It is an amazing console, no surprise there, Nintendo's consoles are probably the best. People criticize how the games look, yet their favorite game is The Last of Us 1 Remake coming to PS5, so I wouldn't take them too seriously. The game selection? Well, it's Nintendo. They are probably the best when it comes to first-party games. Why don't we just move on? Evercade. Or what? Released in May of 2020 to focus on retro gaming, which I heavily respect. It can play games for the Atari 2600, the 7800, the Atari Lynx, the NES, the SNES, 
and the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. I don't need to speak anymore. That is cool. Moving on. So the Analog Pocket. It is designed to play games designed for handhelds of the 4th, 5th, and 6th generation of video game consoles. Only the best generations. Released in 2021, it is pretty cool looking. I kind of want to buy one myself. Moving on. Ah, the Steam Deck. People are trying to tell me the Steam Deck is more cost efficient than purchasing a PC. What the hell is wrong with you? I mean, it is cool and all, but from what I've seen, the price seems somewhat justifiable and a possible competitor to the, to the Switch, which is surprising. But the fact that there are three different prices, which each one having different things included. Wow, a carrying case? Take my $400, Valve! The storage is questionably small, considering this is supposed to play games on your Steam library. And, uh, I don't know if you know this, but... Games take up a lot of space. So that is handheld gaming. Some really good consoles were made, some decent ones were made, and some calculators were made. Oh, but don't forget, they made a walkie-talkie too. What was your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Now I should really get back to some important business. Okay, I did what you asked. Now, can you give the info? All right, all right. Fine. Where Morbius is... Sorry, I've just been wanting to shoot him this whole time. How am I more professional than you in this? You are a government agent. Was a government agent. So then why did you abduct me, shoot me, conduct suspicious tests, possibly sell my organs? Money! Not surprising. Hey wait, this paper he has in his pocket. The man that will 100% know everything about Morbius and whereabouts is the owner of Dean's Bar and Grill, conveniently named Dean. Heh, <laughs> what a stupid name. Who would name their kid Dean?